Well, I was trying to decide what to do next. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off all my rigging and my control surfaces. Get that all done. So I'm gonna do my elevator first. Get that cables ran for that. Kind of back at it. Had a little Hurricane Ian came through yesterday. Luckily, I shouldn't say luckily. Luckily for me, I guess. Uh, it went more east, uh, east, northeast. Missed here where I'm at here in Florida. Uh, I still have some remnants of the wind though happening right now. So you'll hear that in the background, but I decided to come out here and uh, try to start rigging up my uh, elevator at this point. So I got some cables, I have some shackles, uh, these little thimbles and sleeves for the cable, uh, a bolt, and a castellated nut, and we'll have some cotter pins. So I'm going to start, this is what goes on the elevator, at the elevator side, and uh, we'll show you where that goes on right now. The cable will go in here with the shackle and an A and 3 bolt through the shackle into that hole right there. And at the bottom of the elevator, another hole for an A and 3 bolt connected to a shackle. So here's uh, one way to cut the wire, the cable. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get a piece of string, tie a knot to this shackle, and run it to the uh, access hole just to get an idea of how long I'd like to make my cable. Clamp this elevator in place so when I run that string to the access hole, it won't be wobbling up and down on me. I just went ahead and threw a stick in there with some tape on it so I could grab my string. I'm just going to pull it on through. Decided to come back home to make some cuts here. Uh, just got a piece of string. And uh, just gonna measure this out here. We will get that thing cut and uh, crimped on. I'm using a combination of, I don't know how many of y'all seen this guy before. This little guy right here. And uh, I can get a little bit more accurate between that one and the big dog here. So anyway, definitely not the greatest crimper in the world, but anyway. Uh, I had to take one apart because I messed up really bad on it, and uh, even that one wasn't coming apart any, anytime soon. Uh, I have full confidence in these crimps here. Uh, crimped the, I think, uh, middle first, then up by the loop, and then the, the back one there. I'm back here at it again. Uh, I made the cables, the first set of cables that connect to the elevator. I put the shackles on, uh, the control horn on the back of the elevator, the top and the bottom. Uh, cotter pins are in place. Uh, there's little pulleys with cotter pins that go on top of that so the cable don't slip out. I got those in place. I routed them to the front of the airplane or the front just inside uh, just this side of the access hole actually. Now I need to uh, make my controls neutral. The control horn straight up and down and uh, then make up my next set of cables. And these cables will be a lot shorter than the ones extending the length of the, uh, fuse, the aft fuselage here. But um, we're going to do that next. Okay, we're going to see how well this guy fits. Uh, I'm going to put some heat shrink on the ends of these little pigtails here. And uh, I'll hook it up and see what happens. Well, well, just a little heads up. My cables here did not work. So... I'm uh, remeasured them and we're gonna try it again. So I gotta make some new cables. Let's do it. All right, with the second pair made up, they both fit. You can kind of see kind of how they're connected. I do have probably four threads and maybe three on that one, but the bottom one, four threads showing a note. You're not supposed to have any more than three. They connect, they're pretty tight, but not, I don't think they're to spec yet. I totally get the whole divorcing the uh, elevator to the flapper on system now. I don't have them real tight, but you can kind of see the, the pullback you get on the stick here. I mean, a lot of tension right there, and it wants to spring back. See how that wants to spring back? That's because of all the tension on that. Left side, nothing, but right side, it wants to spring back. And that's a normal part of the design. It's kind of janky if you ask me, but... Um, Anyway, I'm going to try to put a bungee on here. That might help. They say these cords, sorry, my light's in the way, but 
these cables rub up against each other. So what they want you to do is uh, put a bungee to the side of one of those uh, uh, L angles and kind of move it off away from the other one. And by doing that, it might take some of that tension um, out of the stick is what I'm thinking anyway. But that's again, that's part of the plans, part of the design. Well, I was making my cables for the elevator, and I thought, I need a way to tension these. Uh, there are some specs on the uh, tightness of the cables and the plans, and the tensionometer uh, Aircraft Spruce has and some other places like Wix, and uh, the cheapest one they have is like 180 to anywhere from 180 to 240 dollars, and uh, that's expensive for just a little gauge, just to tell you how tight your cables are. And uh, I was looking for our alternative ways of doing it, and uh, I came across uh, Darren Towers had uh, made a uh, a, uh, a little gauge. He has an STL file that we're able to 3D print some parts off, and then go to the hardware store and buy some more stuff, and uh, put this thing together. Uh, I decided to go that route um, just because when I decided to go ahead and order one of these tensionometers for that high price, come to find out they're sold out, back ordered for months, everywhere. Not just in the aircraft world, but even outside the aircraft world, back ordered. So I was like, this is not cool. So I got forced to use this method and I hope I can get it to work. And I didn't really want to take extra time out to mess with this, but uh, it should be a simple uh, build now that I'm looking at it. So uh, the only other thing I had to do after I printed this part out was uh, get a little gauge from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, this is a digital one and he didn't use a digital one. I was trying to find the one that was not digital, but I guess according to my Harbor Freight, they don't have that one anymore or they quit selling it or something. Um, I saw it online, but they don't have it in the store. This is the only one they had, which is a little bit pricier. I think it was like, I don't know, $29 compared to like 18 for the other one. But this should still work. It has a back on it. Um, and what happens is this little gauge here will actually fit in that little slot up here like that. And then you can adjust this forward and aft as you need to based on your spring tension and everything else. So anyway, I got this. We're going to try to piece this guy together and see if we get to work, uh, get it calibrated, and uh, we'll let you know what happens. This is how I'm going to calibrate my uh, tensionometer. I have a piece of cable, eighth inch cable. Uh, have it uh, on these loops on both sides. I'm going to fill this bucket with different increments of water, like 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds. I have a scale behind us over here. We're going to measure the bucket as I keep putting water in it and uh, see what my reading on my dial indicates with each 5, 10, 15 pound increment. First test, this is at 10 pounds here. Put one wheel right there, the other one right up there. Push, get the other wheel there, and see what the reading is. 10 pounds. First reading is uh, three millimeters. So we're going to record that at 10 pounds. I may get rid of the highest and the lowest and average the other two and call that my 10 pound mark, but we'll put 15 pounds next and go up like that. Well, what did I come up with? What I came up with is this guy is more accurate or there's more deviation in my numbers at the lower uh, pounds. So at 15 pounds, 20 pounds, uh, 25 pounds, there's enough deviation you can tell a difference. Once you get up to 30, 35, and 40 pounds, the deviation is a lot smaller. Like it goes from 8.8 .8 on average to 8.6, up to 9.1 at 40 pounds. So I've spent hours and upon hours playing with this to tweak it just to find out the right settings, just so I can duplicate the same numbers over and over again. And there's a lot of variance, but I think we're do it like five or six times you get enough numbers you can average out to get an idea approximately where you're at you're definitely um, 
plus or minus five pounds for sure. It's, it's not as accurate as probably the things you can buy at Aircraft Spruce, but that's what we're gonna do for now, get me in the ballpark. All right, I got my smaller cables to actually mesh up with my other ones to fit. Um, the only thing is, you saw the rebound on the stick with the tighter cables. I, w I used my tensionometer, got right about 20 pounds, and uh, the plans say 25 plus or minus five for your tension. Something I'd read in the forums is you probably want to be on the lighter side, more like 20 pounds. And uh, the lighter you tension these cables, the less uh, bounce back you have in your flaperons. In fact, you have very little if you do it just right. Um, the other thing is on my particular cables, as much as I don't want to, one of them I might have to make a little bit longer just to keep that lighter, uh, uh, the lighter bounce back in my flaperons. And I mean, I'm talking like maybe a quarter of an inch smaller on the whole cable. So I gotta make a whole new cable. I hate to, if I'm running out, I got too many threads showing. Or a solid four threads showing on my turnbuckles and you can't have that, three is the minimum. You can have showing is my understanding. As much as I don't wanna make another cable, I think I'm going to make it, uh, at least on one of them anyway. And uh, hopefully that fixes everything. The other thing you might want to, uh, Something else you may want to look at is, I read also in the forums that the engineer from Zenith, uh, Caleb, I think his name may not be, I don't think he works there anymore, but he said when you tension the elevators, have the bungee in place already. Um, so take that in consideration because it will tighten up the cables when you pull on that one cable to keep the cables from rubbing against each other. So uh, that one, again, time I put the bungee in there, it just tightens it up so much that my, my controls, like I said, have that bounce back in them. If you loosen it up just enough, where I'm at right at 20 pounds, or maybe even 19, 18 pounds, uh, it's perfect. You have very little bounce back on your on your flap rod controls. That's what I'm gonna shoot for, minimal bounce back on my flap rod controls. My cables might be tensioned only at maybe 18 or 19 pounds, as opposed to the 20 minimum, but I'd rather not have that such a aggressive bounce back on my flap rod. So, uh, I'm gonna make a new cable. I'm gonna kind of show you how I'm doing my cables. I get one end and I measure from the very tip of it down to the very tip of this side. And last time I had it at 23 and three quarters on this one, I ended up moving it over. So I want the next, I want this tip to now be about a quarter inch over from there where this other line, second line is to the right. And that's where I want the tip of this to be. So I'm gonna slide this down until I get it right even with that. Locker in place and go back out to the hangar. All right, I'm done with the elevators. At least as done as I'm gonna be. Um, they went pretty smoothly for the most part. Had to remake some cables a few times just to get the right length on them. Uh, the issue of this rebounding never really went completely away. Um, it still rebounds, as you can see here. And you gotta put a little bit of force to go to the right on your flapperons. Elevator itself is fine. That wasn't really a problem at all. I'm getting all my throw like I need to, hitting my stops like I need to. There's an area, uh, when I go down elevator, full down, the turnbuckle does hit uh, part of the um, plates up in there, some part of the aluminum. I did have to knock that out a little bit. Um, at full forward, it still barely touches it. At the same time, the stop touches. Um, there's a rivet right there, and I ex exhausted my edge distance on that rivet already. Without taking the horizontal stabilizer out, drilling that rivet out, it's just going to touch. Uh, we'll see what the inspector says about that, but that's only at extreme full down elevator, which I don't think I'll ever use, I hope. Anyway, everything else went fine. Uh, put the castle nuts, cotter pins in place. Uh, folded over the cotter pins, got everything in place. I'm not gonna touch anything. The only thing I didn't do is I didn't uh, safety tie the turnbuckles yet. The tension I got pretty much set at minimum as far as my homemade ten tensionometer goes. I'll wait for the one I get from Aircraft Spruce whenever I get it uh, to get more accurate uh, readings on the tension of the cables, just to see if I can take a little bit more of the spring, the spring back out of the whole entire system. Other than that, bungee cords in place. Next thing I have to do is the, uh, uh, well, as far as elevator is concerned, the next thing I have to do is the trim tab. I haven't got that ran wired or anything. I'm going to do that 
uh, once I mess with the instrument panel and my pedostatic system. But for now, I'm going to move on to the rudder cables.